everybody, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to be doing another video in my Agatha Christie series and today I'm going to be doing a Poirot where to start and favourites. This was highly requested after I did my Miss Marple one and now I have finished every single Poirot short story and every single Poirot full length novel I thought it was high time that I got on and did this video. So I thought I'd do exactly the same as what I did last time, which is where to start. So I'm going to give you some recommendations and I'm also going to talk you through a few of my favourites as well. If you are interested in purchasing any of the books that I mentioned in this video, you can do because I will leave the links for them down in the description box below. So let's get straight into it. So the first place that I actually started with when it came to Poirot was Murder on the Orient Express. Now lots of you are saying that you have read this and you have loved this and now you are stuck and you don't know where to go. I read this a few years ago um, for the first time. I've read it again since, don't worry about that. I've read it more than once. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And like you guys, I was just like, I don't know where to go from now because this book is so incredible and it's so different to the usual kind of detective fiction. But this book, is about the Orient Express and a man called Stephen Ratchet who comes up to Poirot and says, I need you to do something for me. But Poirot being Poirot, he didn't, he didn't like the way that Mr Ratchet was towards him. He didn't like his manner. He thought he was rude. He thought he was obnoxious. So he refuses. And from that refusal, then we lead these um, extraordinary events, which ends up with Mr Ratchet being brutally murdered. And of course, Poirot has to solve it. Now, this book is very different. It's very famous. There's a, a famous film with Albert Finney in it, which is incredible. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it because that's really good. Um, I do have to say that I do actually prefer the David Suchet one because it's a bit more serious. It's more like the book. But the Albert Finney one is, is still fantastic. The reason why this book is so popular and it is kind of legendary is because... It is so different. It is a book that comes into context with morals, it comes into context with religion, and we really feel this emotional connection to Poirot uh, that we've never felt before, which is quite strange seeing as it's one of the earlier books. My advice to you is if you have read this, like me, for the first time, as your first Agatha Christie or your first Poirot, please come back and reread it later on after you know Poirot a bit better. And Honestly, you feel so emotional with it because it's just, it's amazing and incredible and yeah. So once you have actually read something like that, or if you haven't read any Poirot whatsoever, please then go to or start with The Mysterious Ferret Stars, which is the first one anyway. I've got fluff on it. Thank you. Now this was Agatha Christie's first book. And again, like Miss Marple, it's one that plot wise, it's not that plot driven. It's quite a simple plot. But what we have here is the introdu introduction of Poirot and his relationship with Hastings first, that's the most important point. And secondly, we're introduced to Poirot and, and his kind of, his personality and the way that he works, his little grey cells, we're, we're introduced to that and this is a fantastic introduction to those. So. I recommend that you go to this one next. And another great one to start with is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Now this was her third full length novel. She'd done short stories by this point, but this was the third full length novel. So we'd have the one that I've just shown you, Mysterious Ferret Styles. Then we had Murder on the Links, and then this one. And there was a lot of crime writers at this time. So she needed to make herself stand out. And this is how she did it. It's quite simple in a way, but it's so completely not simple in another. It's so complex in another way. It's absolutely genius. And this is the book that people went, stop, think, this person is incredible. Um, it is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, and I can't say any more because I will give it away. <laughs> but all I can say is please go and read this. I haven't bet anyone that said to me oh, I've not liked that book so yeah go read it. So that's where I think you should start but now I'm going to talk you through three of my favourite books. I'm going to start with this one here which I think is the most beautiful and definitely one of the most beautiful books I own which is Sad Cypress. This is 
published by Harper, as all of these ones that I've shown you. But look how beautiful it is. Something that I actually love about these editions is the fact that they actually tie in pretty well with the story, but I absolutely love um, the, the typeface and I love the the roses, I love the black. Oh, just beautiful. Anyway, so one of the reasons why this book is one of my favourites is very simple. It is so tied together. We start in court, we finish in court and it's all just, it's neatly packed up and it just feels like, oh, everything was done amazingly. The plot of this book is quite simple. We have this young beautiful woman Eleanor Carlyle stood on trial for the murder of Mary Gerard. Mary Gerard was her rival in love. She had the motive, she had the opportunity, and the only thing that's standing in the way between her and the gallows is Hercule Poirot. It is amazing. It's one of these books that is a little bit slower, but because it is that tiny bit slower, it is just completely addictive because you literally can't put it down. You have to work out what the next person's going to say. You're going to be like, well, they're going to say this, they're going to say that. So that means that that person must have done this. And you, you're trying to figure out alongside him. And it's incredible. I have such great memories of reading this. I remember I was at home. I was on the sofa. The fire was like crackling merrily in the hearth behind me. And I had my feet up, I had a hot chocolate with marshmallows and I remember I kept putting off just going to bed or going for a bath or doing anything else because I was reading this and I had to finish this. It was amazing and incredible and yes, definitely a book that in my eyes is underrated. It's fantastic. Another one of my favourites is Five Little Pigs. I know some people that have read this and said, yep, it's one of my favourites. But I also know people that have said to me, I've read it and either they don't like it or they don't understand it. And usually the reason why they don't like it is because they find it a bit slow. It is a slower book and the story is, is quite different. So we've got Amius and Caroline Crail. Caroline was hung, she was actually hung, for the murder of her husband Amius. Amius was an artist, he liked to drink, he liked his friends, he liked socialising and he also liked to have affairs with women. Caroline, his wife, knew that. He, she knew it when she married him, it didn't bother her because at the end of the day he was actually in love with her, they had a child together and she accepted the flings, you know, it didn't bother her because it was just sex, sex was just meaningless. But then, one summer, an 18 year old called Elsa Greer turns up and he's doing her portrait so he's also having a fling with her but there's something a little bit different this time because it doesn't just seem like a fling and we go on from there and then years and years later their daughter, Amis and Caroline's daughter, shows up at Poirot's house and says I want you to prove my mother was innocent and that's where we go. So we actually go with Poirot to interview all the people that are involved and they kind of go back in time and then we go back to the present and back in time, back to the present. It's one of those books. So there's not a lot of actual action, but the action that we get is being retold. It's great. I love, it's probably, it's one of the best reveals. I have to say this one and this one for me are the most amazing just who done it reveals. Ever. The emotion was amazing. I love it. This one's like high courtroom drama. And this one is just... Ooh. And for people that don't quite get it or understand it, I do say, if you don't get it, go get your hands on the graphic novel. Or watch the adaptation of this book with David Suchet because, you know, top notch. And finally, the last of my favourites is actually... The last of a book which ties it all together very nicely and that is Curtin, Poirot's Last Case. I read this for the first time, I've read it a couple of times now, but I read it for the first time like the, the day that it was about to be released on ITV um, and I was like I need to I need to read it before it actually comes out on the TV and I read it in the morning and I remember I was sitting in the kitchen, my legs kind of flung over the chair and everything that was going around me 
was just it was just as if it wasn't really happening because I was so just absorbed in the book and the ending <sighs> mind blowing so the story of this one is quite simple we go back to styles which is the very where the very first case happened it ties it all around really nicely hastings is back here as well and we meet poirot in a very frail state so he's lost a lot of weight he is now confined to a wheelchair and he doesn't have with him his manservant george he's had to get someone else in to kind of help with lifting him and carrying him and things but hastings irregardless he's just happy to see his friend but the reason why they're actually there is to uncover a murder to try and stop a murderer happening dun 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 it's amazing and incredible and something that's really nice is sometimes you know you'll read all these books and because of the obviously the hastings ones a lot of them were at the beginning if you do kind of read them in order you do get to a point point you're like i actually really miss hastings but then with this one it just it all feels comfortable again it all feels lovely and amazing and that's what is incredible it's honestly incredible to see this partnership and it's nice to see it for the very last time and i i don't think she could have done this better this of course if you don't know was actually done in the middle of all the Poirot books she basically wrote it and then it was put in a safe so it was written at a time where she was still sort of enjoying writing Poirot because of course she she didn't really like him um but it was put away published decades later and this was the result it's absolutely fantastic it's very emotional every time I read it I have you know my eyes fill up and it's it's just genius so highly recommend this one and again this is one like the murder on the air express if you do read slightly early on go back to it after you've read all of them reread it and you'll feel so emotionally engaged it's an amazing reading experience so that's it that is my poirot where to start and favorites i hope you enjoyed this video as usual if you have any questions for me or any comments let me know in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to get back to you I will eventually be doing a Agatha Christie um, Q&A, so if you do have any questions and I don't answer them down there, I will answer them for you in the Q&A to come later on. If you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, it would honestly mean the world to me. So take care and I shall see you soon for my next video. Bye!